What's going on everyone, Motocrosskit30 here. This is my walkthrough for Resident Evil 5, new game, professional difficulty. So before we actually get started, I thought it was necessary to hop in here and just explain a couple things. The first thing being is, you can't actually start up a new game on professional. You have to complete the game once on veteran, and then from there, you unlock professional. And it's all new game plus from that point. In order to start up a new game, you have to create a new account, but I would do this, but if I started up a new game, I would have to go through Veteran again. So you can't actually start up a new game on Professional. So because of that reason, I'm actually on a pretty much a new game plus, but I try to make it as clo close as I can to a new game. So the first thing is what I did is I cleared everything out in my inventory. As you can see, there's nothing here besides a first aid spray because when you start up a new game, you actually get a first aid spray. Just ignore the golden egg for now, it's just an infinite egg I had. I'm not going to use it or anything, I just didn't feel like wanting to sell it right now, so I just kept it there. So just ignore that for right now. See the treasures are all sold, so they're just going to be stay there because this is on a new game plus file. So the second thing I did is I got rid of all of my money. I used cheat engine, and I was at like 4 million gold, and I put it all the way down to zero. The reason why I put this to zero is because when you start up a new game... This is what you're obviously at zero, but I want to upgrade weapons. And if I had 4 million gold, it wouldn't really be fair because I could just upgrade all the weapons all the way to the max. So instead, I just put it to zero, and then all the money I get from this playthrough, I can use on upgrades. There is going to be a couple rules I'm going to set for myself, so it, try to make it as close as I can to new game. The first thing, I'm not going to buy anything in the shop. And the reason why I'm not going to buy anything in the shop is because obviously I want to keep this as close as I can to a new game. Because a new game, you can't buy, you know, all these weapons. You know, obviously, I'm not going to buy this stuff. Because you don't even get that in a new game. So, we're just going to just pretend like this doesn't exist. Not going to buy any of the proximity mines. No, none of these rounds. Um, I'm not going to buy any first aid sprays just because I want to make it so you can actually, you know, picking up healing items in, inside the game actually means something. Um, I don't know when you get the melee vest. I mean, there's no reason to buy this anyways because you're pretty much fucking dead in one shot anyways, so it doesn't really matter to pick those up. So we're not gonna bother with that. So yeah, pretty much not gonna buy anything in the shop. I'm just basically, every weapon I pick up will be from in-game. And we're starting off with zero money, zero gold, and nothing in my inventory besides the first aid spray. So yeah, this is pretty much as close as I can possibly get to a new game professional run, so... I guess let's just get started. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. I am playing with the AI. Hopefully once I finish this, I can play with a real player. But we'll see what happens. So let's get started. 1-1. One -one. Captain Deshant here. We secured the underground route to the coordinates. I should have seen it coming. It didn't take long after the fall of the Umbrella Corporation for their bioweapons to end up in the hands of terrorists. 
a new era of bioterrorism descended upon vulnerable countries, shifting the balance of power throughout the region. People in the destabilized areas soon feared another incident like Raccoon City was inevitable. As panic spread, governments of the world turned to the Global Pharmaceutical Consortium, which formed the anti-terrorism unit BSAA. Operatives of the BSAA were sent to infiltrate and neutralize bioterrorist hotspots, restoring safety and stability to various regions around the globe. Welcome to Africa. My name is Sheva Alamo. Chris Redfield. Your reputation precedes you, Mr. Redfield. It's an honor. Just Chris, thanks. So you'll be accompanying me to the destination? Yes. Tensions are running high ever since the change in government. I'll bet. Intel says it's a haven for terrorists now. And I'm not going to be happy to see an American. BSAA or not. That's why I'm your partner. Help put them at ease. I'm sure you'll do just fine. Partner. You okay? Yeah, sorry. It's nothing. Let's go. Casualties continue to mount over the long years I've struggled. More and more, I find myself wondering if it's all worth fighting for. Maybe one day, I'll find out. Hey, hey! Who you in Genji? Alafanya nini hapa? You don't have to get touchy. Let's go. There is one thing I do know. I have a job to do. And I'm gonna see it through. What's going on, everyone? Motocrosky30 here, bringing you a new game professional walkthrough for the first chapter in Resident Evil 5 1 1. This is Kirk. Chris, Sheva, can you read me? Chris here. Coming in loud and clear, Kirk. Yes, we read you. There's a black market weapons deal going down in Kijuju. That's where Irving will be. The Alpha Team has already infiltrated the area, and you will be going in as backup. <laughs> Rendezvous with your contact at the butcher's shop. You can gear up and get briefed on the mission there. Watch your backs. Roger that. Copy. Over and out. Chris Redfield, go around to the side door. Chris, this way. Good, you're both here. Come. You too. This way. Maybe because of the new government, the people around here are a little on edge. You should do what you came here to do and go home. Yeah, they really roll out the red carpet for us Americans. I have your weapons for you here. Jetland. The operations are ready to start. Uh. 
Destination coordinates. Found squares up ahead. Go through there. Alpha team's waiting at the deal location. Good. What do you know about Uroboros? Mostly just rumors. Something about visions of a doomsday project. Doomsday sounds about right, and apparently it is no rumor. You're kidding, right? You must find a man named Irving. He is our only lead. And be careful out there. So starting out, you may notice that my graphics look a little bit different. That is because I installed a mod that basically gets rid of the green tint that is in this game. Remember, we're a team. Whatever happens, we stick together. Don't worry. I may not be as big as you, but I can still hold my own. So the reason I have this installed is just because I think it looks a little bit better. But if you guys do not like it, just let me know in the comments and I will change it right back to the original. So now actually talking about gameplay. Chapter 1-1, this chapter is a bitch, especially if you're playing with the AI like I am. So as I was recording this gameplay, I realized that my strategies weren't really efficient as I was playing for this chapter. So I guess what I'm basically trying to say is this chapter gave me a lot of problems. Did you hear that? It came from that building. So as soon as this Magini wakes, just back up, run behind him, and knife him in his knees, and he'll kneel down. He could just do a neck breaker. What the hell just happened? They didn't move like any zombies I've ever seen. So if you don't kill that Magini fast enough, Sheva will start shooting him. So basically, if that happens, just reset. There's no reason to use any ammo in that part. So you can actually fight that group of Maginis, and doing so, you'll get your first treasure in the game. But I do not recommend doing that with the AI. The locals were hostile, and we had to use force. We don't have any contingency plans for this situation, do we, Kirk? Roger on the locals, but your order still stands. Come on, Raj. What does that mean? Was HQ expecting this? Come on. Okay. So yeah, just make sure to loot everything in these rooms. You'll probably just get gold. It's very rare to get any ammo on professional. So just loot all in here. You can organize your inventory however you want. It's basically just personal preference. So this holdout section coming up is just pure bullshit, mainly just because of the fact you don't really get a whole lot of ammo. So yeah, let the bullshit begin.
Benedito! You so all, you just harm him! You don't know what you're talking about! You can all go to hell! Wait a minute. Where's the... Keep on! For what? For now to do here! So once the cutscene is done, loot out this whole room. What you're looking for, possibly a hand grenade, but I never got one. And you need to have at least 10 extra shots for your handgun. If you don't, reset to the last checkpoint and keep on trying until you get at least 10 extra shots. So what I've found, the best strategy is to jump out here and basically just play aggressive. There's no real strategy here that I could find, so it's basically kind of get lucky and just go for... You know, shoot him, shoot him in the head and then just go for punches, uppercuts, neck breakers, whatever you can do. Any ammo you get, if Sheva picks it up, just immediately request for it. Sheva basically is completely useless in this part. We just don't want to get hit because you're basically dead on professional if you get hit. So just stay out here and pick up any ammo you see. And then just try to create distance. Like I said, there's no real strategy here that I could find. Just try to create distance and just wait for the Magini to come in. So I don't know exactly how long it takes for the Executioner to come and open the gate for you. But I think it's like around maybe a couple minutes. So you just basically have to stay out here. Um, sometimes I've had times where these Maginis will drop absolutely nothing besides gold. If that happens, you're just going to have to reset and try again. You kind of just have to do what I'm doing in the video. Just kind of stay over in this area. If you get a hand grenade, that's perfect. It's just completely random. Like, you don't really need it in this part. Just... If you get overwhelmed, just throw the hand grenade. If you don't have a hand grenade, just use all your ammo and just create space like I'm doing right now. Kurt, come in. The locals are hostile. The gate is sealed, and we're trapped. We need backup, and we need it right now. Roger that. Just stay tight. I'm on my way. Did you hear that, Sheva? Help's on the way. Got it. So once you get that dialogue, the executioner is going to come and open the gate. Uh, it's kind of random how fast he will spawn. I kind of got the... Sometimes he'll just come straight away, but sometimes you have to wait like an extra 20 seconds. So yeah, basically the only tip I have here is just try to survive. Once the gate is open, this is when the timer starts. And immediately just run over here and go pick up the machine gun. You don't have to pick up the machine gun, but I highly recommend getting it. Just We're not going to use it until Chapter 5-3 for the Joe fight. And then shoot down the Transformer, try to create space. Hopefully Sheva is in a complete idiot here. And then come up the stairs, shoot any Maginis that are in the way. And then just kind of follow the path I'm going. We're going to go hide up over here. If you're playing with the AI like I am, I do not recommend trying to kill the Executioner. You will most likely run out of ammo, and the enemies are really aggressive, and especially if you're playing with the AI, you will probably end up getting killed a bunch of times. So I recommend just coming over here, picking up some, some loot over here, and there's going to be a ladder. A lot of people know, don't know you can actually go up here. This is the safest spot that I've found just to hang out until basically this holdout section is over with. So once you make your way over here, the Executioner cannot come up here. He'll just hang out down there and just run around. He cannot come up here. So the only thing you gotta worry about is Maginis. At first you might get a little bit overwhelmed as you're seeing in the video, but once you kill this first wave of Maginis though, it'll kind of just be like one at a time. And for this area, I do not recommend you trying to actually like loot. Gotta hold out till Kirk gets here. The reason why I don't recommend you actually loot in this area is you're pretty much just gonna get a bunch of bullshit. There's a lot of cheap shit that happens. Um, if you try to loot, it's just it's probably not gonna go well. Especially with your if you're if you're with a real person, you can go and loot. 
Heck, if you're with a real person, you can go try to kill the executioner, but if, if you're if the AI, just play the safe. Just go up here and just play it safe, because you'll probably get really frustrated. Do some inventory management, whatever you want to do. Just kind of hang out here, kill the Maginis as they come over. And there's not really a whole lot to, to explain here. Uh, don't worry about loot. Loot's not really important. We'll get plenty in the next chapters. Just don't worry about it right now. Just worry about surviving. The main goal in this whole chapter is just to survive. And then once you hear the dialogue for Kirk coming in, that'll basically be the end of chapter 1-1. Which is a complete bullshit chapter. Actually, let me know in the comments if you guys have any better strategies, because this is the only one I can really find. Chris, Sheva, how you holding up? I'll be there shortly. Much appreciated. 